Good morning, friends. Welcome to the session eight of Resiliency 4J Fault Tolerant Library. In this session, we are going to learn about a module called Time Limiter. This is one of the requests made by uh, one of my subscribers asking to explain the time limiter module. How can you configure a time limiter module and stuff? So before jumping into that, let's understand what is time limiter. So time limiter is limiting the amount of time that you have to wait while you call a remote service. So let me let me rephrase that. Limit the amount of time that you want to wait before a remote service responds. So let me give you an example. For example, in this example, the service A is going to call service B. The agreement is like the service B should return within one second. So if it doesn't return within one second, that, then the service A treats that there is some problem with service B and it, it responds back to the client saying that uh, service B is having some issue or something like that. Like the service A shouldn't wait indefinite amount of time while it is making a call to service B. That's a very simple. Thing. So this can be achieved very easily with the time limiter module. Okay. So let's jump on to our agenda. Um, so first of all, why do you need a time limiter? There are so many reasons like like if A is calling B, A cannot wait indefinitely for B to respond, right? It has to know, okay, it has to set some limit. So for example, the limit can be one second, one minute, whatever it is agreed. Beyond that, it cannot wait. So to achieve that, it's very, very easy. Uh, you can use a module like time limiter, okay? So there are two ways of doing that. One is like the annotation way. Annotation is a very lot simpler way what we have learned uh, in the previous modules as well. So you just annotate your function with the time limiter annotation and you're done. It takes care of everything. If, if the, for example, um, you have a method which is calling in a service A is calling a service B, the method A, if you annotate with a time limit annotation, that's then it, take, it takes care of uh, timeouts and stuff. Okay, there are two ways of doing it. One is like annotation approach. Another one is like the functional interface or higher order functions, okay, or decorator function approaches. Why Why there was two approaches? Why, why can't we just use annotations uh, which looks cleaner? There are few limitations with the, uh, annotation approach uh, which i'm going to explain you when i was showing you the both but simply remember when you want to implement time limiter module there is one rule which you need to remember is the method that you are implementing or you annotating with time limiter module should return a future object should should return an object which implements future interface that's the only one constraint if you remember then the rest is very simple this the rest configurations are like very straightforward how do you configure uh, other other modules so let us uh, do a short demo and uh, as a standard practice uh, this entire session is documented uh, in my github repository so like the time limiter for slow calls okay you can you can just clone this repository and play with the code so uh, let me explain you the use case here here I have two services, service A and service B. Service A is calling service B and it expects that the service B returns within one second. If it doesn't return in one second, it is going to send a response to the client from the cache or it can send the error back. But here I approach the approach I used as a cache. So for example, the service A says that uh, it returns the data from cache and do a log message. That's very simple. Instead of service A, waiting indefinitely on service b it only waits for one second that simple thing can be easily achieved with time limiter so this is call b right something like a function call b which i am annotating with the time limiter module and that functionality you easily get it okay so uh, the first thing what you have to do is you clone my github repository and uh, so here i already cloned it to this location then maven clean install because i don't keep 
binaries in the GitHub. It's very simple. You just use Maven clean install the it got compiled. Now, now next, what you have to do is you start the service here. So it's a very standard pattern. You run the services. By the way, service A and service B are REST APIs. I think you might be knowing it, but for the newer people. So I started service A and I started service B as well. Okay, now service A and service B is up. Next, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use JMinitor. So the JMX file, the script is also there in the repository. You can just uh, import that script and try to play with it. So what I'm going to do uh, is like, uh, I'm going to call service A and see, I'm, I'm going to make 10 calls to the service A and see how the service A responds, okay? Uh, I slightly go to the whiteboard as well to explain you a little bit about this. So the rules for, so here what we have is we have service A is calling service B. Okay, the rule is like within one second, the service A has to, service B has to respond else service A is going to else the service A is going to uh, return from the cache. It won't wait. That's the only thing. So if, if the service B is taking more than one second, service A times out and returns the data from the cache. The simple way uh, is like the service A has a method called, uh, let me see, I think it's a get greeting or something like that. Okay. So service A, there is a greeting method, which I annotated with time limiter. And this is going to call service B. You, you didn't, do, you don't have, you didn't uh, make any changes to your application logic. Okay, you just uh, annotated that uh, with the calling function. Only rule here you are thinking you have to remember is this greeting method, right? Whatever you have should return a future object. Then only this whole thing will work. Okay, there are two ways of doing it. First way we are going to see is like the annotation way. So before uh, uh, let us try to play and understand. What I'm doing is here, I'm I'm generating 10 calls. So there is a one client who is making 10 calls. And we know, right, the service B is a faulty service. So if you see here, purposefully I made someone called service B. Okay, 50% of its requests are taking going to take two seconds for sure. So that is what I have, that random thing and just generates a slow behavior. So service B is in a way faulty service, which is randomly generating uh, slowness, okay, slow calls. 50% of the calls will take more than two seconds. So uh, that is not acceptable behavior from service A. So how service A handled it, let us see. Now let us go to the annotation style. The simple thing what you have to do is you have to annotate your function. This is what a service A is doing. So it is calling service B and uh, if there is a data, it returns, uh, it returns the data back to the user. Okay. So in terms of string saying that whatever it got the message, it is going to. And I said to you, right, this method needs to be a future. It needs to be a future interface. Okay. So and uh, now what is happening is like um, as usual if a is calling b it uses rest template and it makes a call and if call times out uh, it is going to return from the cache so this is what 
a callback method. So if something, if the timeout has occurred, it will call a callback method, else it will return the normal data. So this simple it is. Now, how do you configure time limiter as usual in your application configurations? You can see that timeout duration is like one second. It has to wait one second. If it is more than that, then it has to return. Then there is another attribute called cancel running future. So for example, it invoked a call and you have once the timeout occurred, you have to cancel that call. That invocation thread needs to be come out. Okay. So based upon your if you want to cancel it, you can use cancel runnable feature or you can say it is a false. So this plays a very vital role between annotation and functional interface. When I come to functional interface, I'll explain you uh, how this why do we have a fun functional interface? Sorry, the decorator way of doing it and as usual they are configurations default configurations i'm inheriting this is my uh, time limiter slow uh, name okay the name of my time limiter okay so this is like this is the, my time limiter name which i defined its behavior in the application .amr. and it has if timeout occur this is going to be get called so let us let us uh, let us play with the example and see now service a is up service b is up i built it now let us send few requests let me clean then run so the requests are going and now you can see that okay it got six failures or what we want i it's not really failures okay six calls are taking more than two seconds and the fallback method got called so this is a fallback method right so the call to service be timed out and the fallback method call and the data is served from the cache instead of the actual data so the strategy you can follow essentially the what you have to understand here is you really need not to write any code for time limiter you just annotate with your function with that and and this entire code is going to run it in a separate thread and the times are configured using the time limiter okay that's the only thing so this won't run it in a request thread when a request comes the time limiter is going to call a new thread okay thread and it's going to execute this method and it is going to manage that object so whether it is can be cancel or something like that okay so that one difference you need to understand it it's not it's not running on the same request thread it, it spawned a new thread uh, that's one of the difference which you need to understand and that simple it is so if you see here uh, six calls were like having time out and uh, and it returned back now this is the annotation approach now the second approach what i'm going to show you is the functional style approach or uh, or decorator approach okay or a higher order function so so the same thing like you can configure your time limiter like this in your class i have to say wait cancel running running future true okay now you can see that you are you are running it in a separate thread okay so time limiter has ex execute future supplier so yeah to the supplier interface you passed your object so you are running essentially this is what your call right rest template dot get entity this this is what your call this is what your call to the service b so if some exception has occurred then it's going to return from the cache else it is going to return the actual value okay so why do you wrote a higher order or decorator method is right this cancelable the future object okay the cancel uh, future object can happen only with annotate it will open only with this way but not annotation way when you have annotation 
then cancel running feature won't work. That's the reason you need to have a non annotation way. So uh, based upon your need, you can go with either approach. Now, let me uh, clear the result. Let me make a call to the functional style one. Sorry, I think I need to enable it. Save and run. So the behavior is same. If here you can see timeout exception has occurred. So now it's only the four calls that got timed out. Uh, once again, it's the behavior uh, of the random function uh, of service B. That's that's okay. So we expect that at least 50% of the calls were like a uh, timeout, but here we only got 40%. That's fine based on the random function behavior in service B. Only thing you need to understand is like we are you have to call this calls it in a separate thread, not in the request thread. So that's one difference you have to understand. So now you got both functional and annotation approach. So the entire code is available, you can clone. Coming back, what uh, what you need to have, the same you need to have the resiliency forge as your dependency and uh, this Spring Boot AOP if you, uh, uh, the Spring Boot actuator if you want to have metrics collected and you want to monitor those all things which I covered in the session seven, uh, you can have that there. Okay, so yes, if you, I'll show you one way to run service A in a debug mode, then you will understand what I'm saying about the, in a separate thread, right? Not in execution, not in the request calling thread. Let me run this whole program in a debug mode. Let's, let, them, let me run the service A in a debug mode. Logging dot level. Root equal to debug. If I run this, okay, I'm running the service A in a debug. And let me once again run the function call. Here you, you can see that, right? Here you can see that it is running in a separate thread on pool one worker thread, not in the not in the request calling thread. That's one difference you understand. Then you'll you'll get to know mainly you will go you will you will rule out all the issues you are going to have with the time limiter. Um, hope you might have liked this uh, session. The entire repository uh, is there in GitHub. You can play with these simple examples. If you have any questions, uh, please drop a comment. Uh, thank you. Thank you for watching.